Hello everybody and welcome back to Provis Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved Custom Scenarios. It's a new month which means that the popular tab has been re-updated with a lot of new stuff which is very exciting. Why is Shrek Laddie back on here? No! Not one of my, not one of my proudest moments, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, so uh, I did find a scenario on the Steam Workshop page which I thought I would take a quick look at. I think it is called Nuclear Warfare, which I did subscribe to. There you are. Actually, it looks like there's a lot of nuclear warfare scenarios here, which is a little bit disconcerting, but okay. By Daniel King, the French version at Batom. But Batom. Version Francais. Okay. The fight over the world's resources has caused a nuclear war. Nuclear radiation is spreading everywhere, killing everyone it touches. Will you choose to kill all of the humans or save the humanity? You decide. It sounds like, I mean, what, what, what is a plague going to do to stop this? Am I going to create a plague that absorbs radiation and saves the humans? Or just let them all die, in which case, do I have to do anything? Or just sit back and it, and it kills them? I have no idea. This was created for fun purposes only. Aslo, what happens in this scenario doesn't reflect the creator's personal opinions. Well, obviously you don't want a nuclear war. I didn't think I, anyone was going to assume that, but okay. You're going to be playing as a bacteria, not bioweapon, as you might expect, because it's hard to control the bioweapon. Well, let me play the bioweapon anyway. Okay, a lot of people play Bioweapon on Mega Brutal and stuff like that. Let it be a challenging scenario. The, the Bioweapon's a good scenario. Nobody uses that dang thing anymore, but I like it. ATP boost Darwin, si sorry, Darwinist, Aquacide, Extremophile, Symptostasis, blah, 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 normal difficulty, and it's just called War. That's it. How about... How about Nuclear Holocaust? Oh, cool, I can actually fit all those characters. Perfect. The last day of peace. This is the Earth, our lovely planet. It's living in an awesome peace, but some leaders are fighting for the control of oil and other strategic resources which will declare very soon a nuclear war. The humanity will start suffering. I'm gonna guess that French is actually this guy's first language or something just based on what actually is in there, so the humanity can be can be uh, forgiven there. Things to note, it's gonna be impossible to find a cure for the disease as you're not simulating a sickness, but you're simulating a war. Oh cool, the two choices available are to wipe the humanity or save it. Both will result in victory. We're starting off in the United States, 2017. All right, well, um, I feel like we are on a bad path here. <laughs> uh, the war starts. I mean, I feel like once a nuclear war has started, we've actually launched the first nukes. So you've kind of hit that point of no return. I mean, yes, you could stop sending more nukes, but, I mean, it's already pretty much the worst-case scenario there. So, I don't know. Do you want to live in a world that's a nuclear tomb? Not sure yet. Chemical bullets. The armies begin to use chemical bullets as ammunition for pistols. That's illegal, I think, but okay. Turning the war into a chemical war. Sounds very illegal and very lethal. Uh, we have insanity. Neuropathic action of the radiation in the frontal cortex causes severe emotional and behavioral abnormalities. Our only real option for infectivity that I can see... Bunkers, huge amounts of bunkers that protect people from potential shelling. Does that reduce lethality? It does not. I feel like it ought to, but okay. War of Machines, the creation of self-driving intelligent cars in September of 2017. That can separate enemies from allies and be equipped with guns to fire at enemies automatically. Drone cars, drone tanks, basically. I don't know. I feel like we have to go for insanity because I don't really have any other options here. I mean, if I'm supposed to save humanity, then I would imagine I'm not trying to get any lethality, right? Maybe it's a little bit more complicated than that, I'm not too sure. USA declares war on Russia. It has begun. And we actually get an automatic infectivity here. Well, that's kind of cool. All right. Uh, I guess we'll go for the chemical warfare in violation of a few international treaties and see what happens there. Uh, do we want to go for bunkers? Let's try bunkers. That leads to nuclear bunkers. Different ways found to make the bunkers safe in nuclear warfare. Pretty sure we've already more or less figured that out, but okay. Needs electricity in order to provide fresh air to Popol, as the buildings have no windows. Well, yes, windows would leave them somewhat open to uh, some infection, or radiation, I should say. Russia destroys Greenland. How dare you? After spying on the American communication lines, the Russian army has detected that USA is going to create military bases in Greenland. As a result, Russia has sent tactical bombers and nuked Greenland. Greenland is now completely destroyed. Sure enough, holy crap, it actually did kill everybody there. They aren't joking. Huh, that's actually pretty clever. I, I like I like what the author's doing there. They actually scripted the entire death of a country to make sense. Good for them. Uh, do you want to go for chemical bullets too for more infectivity? I guess so, but I'm worried about that lethality ramping up. 
Now, granted, it would be no different, really, in something like, um, a bioweapon, so... You know, I don't, I don't think that it's impossible for me to handle. That was a custom thing. Oops. Bunkers were created worldwide. But yeah, I'm a little bit worried still. That's, that's a lot of lethality when I don't have a lot of, uh, infectivity yet. Regular grenades replaced by chemical, more doedly ones. Okay, that's... I'm, I just need infectivity at this point, man. Chemical attack on Saudi Arabia. A chemical bomb has been dropped on Saudi Arabia, causing many deaths and panic among the population, attacking country unknown. And yes, 25,000 people did just spontaneously die. How tragic. Advanced chemical weaponry. Fighting countries allows the usage of chemical shells, making their armies more powerful. Again, with lethality, where's my saving humanity's option? Let's go for the nuclear bunkers and save what people I can so we can survive the nuclear holocaust. Russia strikes the USA. You know, I like that the United States is not the one who launched the first nuke. I mean, granted, Russia destroys Greenland, but we're just like, you know what? Maybe we can appease Russia. It's fine. And then Russia's all like, nuke? I mean, really, when, when is the United States going to unleash hell? I know that Russia has a larger nuclear arsenal than the United States does, but still, you'd think we'd do something. Oh, wait, no. It says there was an American nuclear strike. Well, what? As a reply to the American nuclear strike, the Russian army has launched a nuke on USA, causing lots of deaths among the population. Other countries are trying to make peace, but they're not finding a solution. Well, who did we nuke? Did I miss a pop-up? Maybe it's just saying that whoever we infect is somebody we nuke. Possibly. I'm not too sure. China, Canada, Korea, Brazil, India, and the UK have joined the war. The war has turned into a world war and everyone is scared. The UN seems unable to stop the fighting. Ape fist is because I found no human fist, so this is close enough. We'll just say it's a very hairy man, okay? No problem, I understand. Do you wanna go for War of Machines? I mean, we could just because it might unlock something useful. We'll try it. War of Machines 2, Machines 2. The development of robots to si simulate humans. I guess I, I almost said stimulate humans, but it could be that too. Can do many tasks a normal soldier would do, and it's well protected against nuclear weapons. I mean, I do think that drone warfare is sort of the future. Not a good future, mind you. But I do sort of think that it's inevitably going to happen. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about treaties and stuff to try and stop the, you know, machines from becoming the main source of warfare. Because at that point, you can just go to war as much as you want. And you're not worried about the moral cost of people dying. So there's a lot of people thinking that's uh, going to be a terrible thing for humanity and we'll go to war more often. So we need to have a treaty to prevent it. I don't know what's going to happen with that. We'll see. USA sends fleet to Korea. Saying that their nuclear power is becoming worryingly powerful, the USA has warned Korea to stop its nuclear researches, researches huh, by sending its fleet there. The American president has promised he'll stop Korea by himself if the Koreans don't agree to stop. I mean, to be fair, um, there's a lot of concern that basically that's the exact direction we're going right now. The stuff that's happening in Korea, I mean, don't get me wrong, they do posture a lot to try and get uh, concessions from the international community and more foreign aid and stuff like that, but holy crap. It's escalating pretty quick, isn't it? Chemical bombs making things more deadly. Chemical shells, field mortars, and low-caliber tank shells. We're really focusing on this whole chemical thing and not a lot on nuclear warfare. Nor also saving the planet, which I seem to recall was supposed to be an option. We'll go for chemical shells one and two for the extra infectivity. I guess we have to go for chemical bombs. Like, there's, there's no effort here so far to save humanity. We're just like, let's just unlock a bunch of chemical attacks and kill them in the worst possible ways you've ever imagined. That's what we're doing right now, and I'm kind of like, I don't know where the author's trying to go with this one yet, but I'm sure we'll find out pretty soon. I do like, I do like, that so far the USA and Russia are the two that are getting primarily affected here. I know that they had a scripted event to make Russia get infected kind of early, but it makes it look like the casualties so far are primarily in Russia and the USA, which makes sense if the two decided to nuke each other. So that's actually kind of cool. I do like that. Let's go for chemical bombs. That leads to nuclear war. I'm pretty sure we've already crossed that threshold, but okay. Governments allow the usage of highly lethal and highly reactive nuclear weaponry. Radiation rates become considerably higher. Nuclear war awaits. You even said on day one that nuclear war began. Nuclear Holocaust placed on the watch list. Watch out for that Holocaust, guys. We all might die from radiation poisoning and or nuclear energy. One of the two. All right, here we go. Nuclear war begins. Nuclear bullets. The use of nuclear bullets instead of chemical ones, making them radioactive. I don't think that's a thing. I mean, I know that there are like, well, let's see. Am I right on this? Are there like radi radioactive isotope depleted bullets? I can't remember if that's actually a thing or not. Maybe it is. Well, anyway, I can't say that I know a ton about guns and all that kind of stuff. It's just not something I ever got into. Nuclear grenades. 
tiny little nuclear explosions. I don't know if you're going to have enough critical mass for that to work, but all right. And then nuclear weapons, upgraded weapons that allow troops to use nuclear ammunition on them, more powerful and more lethal. All right, now I'm kind of curious. Is there actually like a, a theory about whether or not you can create nuclear weaponry like that? Small arms? Because if so, that's terrifying, but if, it, it'd also be the first time I've ever heard of something like that. UN Intervention 1. The UN intervenes and calls for world peace, and nobody listened, because it's just the UN and this entire Security Council is at war. Populations are happy, but governments refuse to stop the war. Robot bans. The UN forces the fighting nations to stop using their intelligent cars. Who's enforcing it? Because the UN doesn't have an army, because all the armies of the Security Council are fighting each other. Nobody knows, but we'll just assume that it works. Some countries ignore it and continue to use them. And then we have Peace Treaty, Global Peace for One Week. So what, does it just cancel lethality for a week? Because that'd be kind of cool if you could script that. I'm not sure if you can or not, but... Sweating. The loss of fluid through sweating also increases infection rates due to poor hygiene, more dangerous in cold countries. I mean, we'll pick it up, but what does this have to do with nuclear warfare? Coughing. Hmm. First aid... Oh, I see. The first evidence of radiation infection. Hard to notice this is a common sim sim symptom for a lot of different diseases. Abdominal pain. So now we're just creating, basically, we're, we're, we're just evolving radiation sickness. Apparently. Do I want to save humanity or destroy it? I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm, I haven't really committed to one way or the other yet, I think. Um, we could try going for that. UN intervention. I mean, I, I don't know how it works. Maybe this is another scenario where I need to do both. Let's, let's, we, we, we kill people all the time. Let's try going for UN intervention. We're going to go for that. That leads to UN intervention 2. The UN sends some military forces armed with bulletproof shields and anti-radiation helmets to the front lines, stopping the wars in some fronts. The UN tries to stop the war and declare peace, but no one is listening and the war continues. Again, I mean, the UN is kind of toothless without certain people supporting its military efforts. And considering all those people are already involved in a war, I really don't think I understand how this is supposed to work. I mean, yes, yeah, suspension of disbelief, I get it, but even so. UN Intervention 3, the UN sends all available military servants to the front lines with full safety equipment, stopping the war on most fronts. Reduces lethality. Okay, we've done that. We'll ban robots. Presumably you have to go for the entire abilities tree right down here, and that's going to lead to global peace. I'm just guessing. Let's go and grab a week of peace. The UN bans robots. In a step to stop the war, the UN has banned the usage of the new robotic cars, saying that they're dangerous and won't help end this war. Some countries ignore this decision and continue to use the cars. I mean, are we talking like Batmobiles? Is that what basically we have? Like the Batmobiles from um, um, Arkham... No, it wasn't Arkham Origins. Crap, what was the last Batman Arkham game? Arkham Knights, that's the one. We just have a bunch of robotic... <laughs> Batman cars with high caliber rifles on the top. I mean, that's cool, but I don't know why we have those in the first place or why those seem to be one of the things that triggered the entire event. I, I don't know. Peace Treaty 3. The world is in peace for one month. Okay. However, we don't seem to be able to work our way toward the center because I'm pretty sure we have to unlock War of Machines first. Then we can unlock it. So until they develop new dangerous cars, we can't ban them. And until we ban them, we can't stop the war. That makes a lot of sense. Does not actually at all. So interesting though, is that we're not racing any cure. So this whole cure progress thing is just bull honky. It doesn't matter at all. What we're trying to do is race the lethality before the entire world dies or becomes infected, presumably, which is kind of cool. War of Machines 3, the creation of intelligent planes, tanks, and ships that don't require human help to be operated. We already have some of those, at least in the United States. Um, hate to burst your bubble there, but, uh, I mean, I don't think I'm revealing any sort of important information by saying that's already a thing. So, are we on the verge of nuclear war? I don't know. Robot Bands 3, all intelligent tank ships in most cars were invented and then now banned, but by the UN. But the human robots remain as fighting countries refuse to... Are you saying we have human robots now? We have androids fighting on the front lines? Because those are a lot harder to design than a drone. Those are really hard to design. I've been, I've, I've been witness to a lot of robotics uh, projects back when I was in college. Just basic things, like getting robots that can walk properly. Controlled falling. Very difficult to do. So somehow we jumped to androids, then we were worried about drones, planes, tanks, and so on, which are relatively easy to make. 
and I don't know. It's, it just sort of seems a little backwards to me, but we'll go with it. World peace! Congrats, the world is now going to live in peace. You saved the humanity from the third and worst world war that ever happened on this planet. Bam. That's all it takes. We banned your cars and the world rejoices. Peace shall descend from the heavens. Why are we not having peace? Why are people still dying? It lied to me. First, we have to infect the world, apparently. Which will not be too difficult. All we have to do is just make radiation sickness a little bit worse. <laughs> It doesn't make sense! Okay. Well, we'll go with it anyway. Epistaxis, alright, we'll go for the coma. And then total body dissolving. The infected bodies gets completely dissolved from the inside, causing rapid death. Let's try not to do that. Is there anything I can do that makes us more effective in Morocco? Uh, I guess we'll go for nuclear grenades. That's gonna de-escalate this whole situation and lead to world peace, absolutely. Uh, nuclear bullets? Sure. Can only help. I mean, mutually assured destruction and all that. There we go, we infected the world and now we have world peace. We had to develop a few more weapons to kill more people first, but then we got there. You've saved the humanity from the war. The UN has set measures all countries have to respect, and it's now giving all countries equal amounts of important resources. Oh! Oh! So we finished the world war, and now it's turning into an actual global government redistribution of wealth and resources. <laughs> Wonderful. That doesn't cause a new war immediately. And then everyone dissolved from the inside. <laughs> Thank you, game. Thank you for that finale. That's amazing. All right, we saved humanity from the war. Three stars. Almost 70,000 points, 381 days. Huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't want to sound stupidly nitpicky, but you have to admit, the sequential events of this scenario feel a little bit weird, right? We're killing people faster. That will lead to peace. But no, I, I, I don't know. It just seems a little bit bizarre to me, but okay. We'll work with it. I mean, all in all, it's a creative scenario. I like the idea that we're not trying to cure a disease. The cure doesn't matter. We're basically racing the clock on the lethality. The problem is, to me at least, how do you lose? Because it sounds to me, if you decided not to go for the UN stuff and just kill everybody, you win. And if you do go for the UN stuff and, you know, infect everybody, you win. But... What if you were going for the UN, and then you failed, and everyone died because you weren't fast enough? Do you still win? I, I just feel like there's no failure state in this scenario, which is a little bit bizarre. So it's a creative idea, don't get me wrong, and I like some of the scripting and killing off Greenland like that and stuff. Like, that's, that's good. The author's making some really good first steps. I guess I just, as a matter of mechanics, have to kind of question, is there a failure state? And if not, shouldn't there be one? And how would you do that? I don't know. I mean, all in all, sure, I'll say that I enjoyed it. It's, it's a creative attempt at a scenario. Uh, just a few things that I think would be, you know, good to improve on. Uh, that's just my idea. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.